both turned into points for the Buffalo Bills. So a significant moment really in this game came from special teams. You know what, Chris, you talked about them getting physical there and running the football and being effective with it. It dawns on me that when you have a good team, you can play both hands, right? And we know Josh Allen can get back there 50 times and sling it with anybody with Diggs and Kincaid, Knox, Davis, and all those guys. But now they can just pound the ball and take your will in addition to taking time off the clock. And it's what the Chargers have not been able to do this year. Right now, I'm right. Gonna, I'll, I'll take some heat for this and I'll let them kick it out. So, oh, good. good. Give like people a chance to build up their anger. Fair catch, 25 yards. You know what? Let's let America on Peacock see you <laughs> so they can draw, draw their ire. Go ahead. So, you know, PFF, and I don't want anybody else to take the blame for this one. But the best run blocker right now on the Chargers by our data, mm -hmm. Justin Herbert. Really? If you do nothing, you get a 60 grade. Okay. They don't have any of their key blockers above 60. And you can't sustain winning football if that's going to be the solution. We just saw the Buffalo Bills flip the switch and go up and down the field. So in my conversations with the Chargers, you know, everybody, they ask questions. We have conversations about the whole thing. Like, what do you think? What do you see? All that. Right. I go, you guys got to get better running the ball. You got to come off the ball and establish itself. And that's the one thing that I thought early on that Giff Smith probably had a little impact with, right? He's a D-line guy. He's a line guy. Yeah, let's go get him, guys. And and they have run it better to their credit tonight. Austin Eckler's had a good half. Six yards on that carry for Eckler. He finishes the half with 46 yards. 14-10, Buffalo. And Melissa's got Sean McDermott. Thanks, Mike. Sean, the offense flipped the switch. How did you finally get it going? Well, they got into a rhythm. Josh made a big play for us, and then that got everything going, the run game included. The Chargers offense, a bit of a spark, scoring 10 early on. What are your defensive priorities in the second half? Well, we just got to settle in and play good defense, get off the field, get the ball back to our offense. Thanks, Sean. All right, thank you. All right Melissa. Energetics on the sidelines in your first half as a head coach. What are your impressions in this new role? You know, I think uh, it, it kind of went according to how we wanted it to. We knew it was going to be a heavyweight fight. A little filling out the first half, 14 to 10. We're ready to roll the second half. The Bills finally got their offense going. What is the plan to slow them down in the second half? Yeah, we got to tackle better. We got to get off blocks. But we knew they were going to come back swinging right there. Now it's our turn to go back and swing. That's good. Thank you. I like that dude. And, oh, me too. <laughs> and at 55 years old from Mableton, Georgia, about 20 minutes northwest of Atlanta. His dad played college football for the legend Frank Howard at Clemson. If you talk about like a southern defensive front coach, Giff Smith, that's the guy. People like him around here. It's why he got the opportunity. Dar Darius muffs it. Darius Davis muffs it for the second time in his many kickoffs. It's a touchback where he first half, and he played pretty well, didn't he, Mike? Or they were blown out against the Raiders a week ago. Down four at the half. Last game, they were down 4-2. They were down 42 to nothing. Stick first down, everything's covered. Checks it back down to Everett with the catch. Big hit, gain of four to the 29. The flag comes in. Taron Johnson, the tackle. Everett shaken up on the hit. And the athletic training staff comes out to look at him. Big personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number seven. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the results of the play. Automatic first down. Back a little bit here. And that's dropping the helmet down for the contact. Let's give you another look at it. And again, it's said so often, Chris. Part of the lowering the head deal is to protect the defensive players as well and try to get them fundamentally out of that. Bills fans don't like it as it's walked off to the 44-yard line. Yeah, and you could also see Gerald Everett take a bit of a bad step on the tail end of that thing as well, sort of extending his leg back. And that's it's a foul, but it's also, if you ever played football, right, you understand that Sometimes it happens. Everett 6'3, 240. Johnson trying to bring him down. First down picked up. Eckler going to get another first down. Austin Eckler to the 42 yard line. And a pickup of 14 as the Chargers 
start this half with two completions. Yeah, the ball came out a little bit weird. I think he had to throw it around the edge rusher coming at him and maybe even got a tip on it. But I tell you, Austin Eckler looks like Austin Eckler tonight. Inside run there for a couple of yards. You know, Chris, we've been using this stat. We've seen the Chargers a lot the last couple of years. Austin Eckler, you go back to 2021, the most touchdowns in the NFL over that stretch have been a bit quieter this year, especially the last month and a half. But a little more of the guy we have seen over the first six years of his career. A little injury to start the season and kind of coming back slowly, and sometimes you just have one of those years, too. Second and eight. The rusher comes, throws incomplete. And the Bills sideline was hoping Rasul Douglas would see Ooh. that Eckler was heading the other way. They were trying to get that ball to Eckler there, and they're lucky yep. because Eckler took it up the field and Stick had no idea what he was doing. And Rasul Douglas is one of those guys, and that what a big deal that was, right? The trade coming over from Green Bay, two interceptions since he came over here, and he is one of those guys like a Marcus Peters kind of guy. You just, you don't want to mess around with too many throws over there. Somehow they end up in his lap. Bills fans making that noise. Extra man coming. Stick is sacked by the man we just talked about. Rasul Douglas. Sean McDermott dials up the pressure and Douglas gets the sack. That's on Easton Stick. They're... They have to protect in here. This guy's unprotected, so the quarterback has to account for him, unless it was Isaiah Spiller, but he had a play fake going the other way. So just a little lack of experience there to understand that if Douglas came on the blitz, it was up to the quarterback to pick him up. It's the second sack of Douglas's career. Had one last year at the Packers. J.K. Scott kicks it. Fair caught by Hardy at the 10. Playing this. Christmas weekend. We'll start with two games for you. This one exclusively on Peacock. With the run, the ball's on the ground. Don't see the Gilliam, the fullback, get on it or not. He does. It's second down. Ooh, wow. Big moment in the game here. Let's see. Chargers coming off the pile, but they've already signaled second down. So they play off. I think they probably would have called it down. Yeah, I think so, right? Knees Terry, down. Terry, your gut? It, it does appear that his knee's down just before the ball starts to move. It, was, it wasn't out, but it was wobbly. <laughs> it, it was starting to wobble anyway. It was thinking about moving. And it definitely didn't. was thinking about it. <laughs> Pick up a three. We have a whistle here, and we have a timeout taken. Let's see. Sean McDermott perhaps talk about the play clock situation on that play. He was trying to get a fresh clock. Right. He said, I don't there want the timeout. There is no charge timeout. The officials were resetting the play clock to 25 seconds because the ball was delayed being made ready for play. The explanation there from Adrian Hill. Worked the wild card game last year. And Giff Smith getting that same explanation as well. I was thinking about what Melissa said before that Maybe as that ball was close to coming out, what was Giff Smith's 17-year-old daughter, Ava, thinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't with us at the top, the daughter said to Giff Smith, they're going to let you have the challenge flag? <laughs> <laughs> Giff's a dad of two, two, two kids, a 17-year-old daughter, 15-year-old son. Allen protected. Escapes and fires for Diggs. Underthrown. Intercepted. Aloe Gilman's got it. He had him breaking free, couldn't get enough on it, and half the Charger team goes down to celebrate like Santa just dropped a gift down the chimney. I give him A for effort. I mean, Josh Allen's got a huge arm, but he is rolling hard to the right and tried to throw this thing all the way back across the field. It wasn't that short. But it was definitely short, A for effort, but God, what a play by Gilman, who has been sensational in coverage. Their best graded cover defensive back on this team, and that was big. 
Beautiful play. Started his career at Navy. Finished at Notre Dame. Sixth round pick. Comes up with the pick, and there goes Eckler on the run for a gain of about nine. That interception thrown by Josh Allen moves him up one more in a time with Sam Howell, Washington, the most picks thrown here in the league this year. I, I tell you, I like what the Chargers are doing now. We talked about their run blocking. They're coming off. They're doing some duo blocks, double teams. Let's attack these guys. No huddle as well. Kellen Moore calling the plays and a couple yards for Eckler to the 46-yard line. You know, the other thing, Mike, that's really been surprising for me in this first half is we have not seen Josh Allen throw the ball to the backs at all. And that was the big change, right, that was taking place with Joe Brady coming in. They had over 300 yards passing just to the backs in the last four games, and he never even attempted a pass in the first half. Brady going through the tablet there, looking at the plays and the formation. So he's got a plan for the next time. Darius Davis had that hard time holding on to kickoffs. Able to take that end around a couple yards shy of the first down for the fourth round pick out of TCU. One of the rookies of this Chargers team. He's the explosive guy, and they really could use a little bit of that. Uh, you know, with no Keenan Allen, no Mike Williams. You just don't have that guy that's just going to give you the explosive play in the game. And any way you can get the ball in his hands, usually good things happen. Yeah. 38, see the pressure coming. Stick decides to pull it, keep it, and take off. Easton Stick on the run to the 17-yard line. A gain of 21. Give Smith. Win one for the Gipper. Here we go. Oh, all right. Go. Let's go all the way across here. He had to yank that away from Isaiah Spiller. Did you see the mesh point of that one? Spiller thought he was taking the ball and literally stick just yanked it back out of that mesh point because he knew and could see at an opportunity. That's it. I guarantee you Smith's speech this week had something to do with running the football better. This is a different looking team. 17, Johnston, the speedster. Some blocks on the edge, but a flag is down as he accelerates inside the five. Down to the three. This flag thrown at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to come back. It's on Los Angeles. Illegal formation offense. The left tackle was uncovered and was on the end of the line with an ineligible number. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. It's not, it's not the left tackle. Okay, it is left tackle and it's by rule, whatever. But the receiver can't be off the ball on this side. So basically, we've been through this before, right? Is he on the ball? Is he off the ball? All that you have to do if you're Quentin Johnson is point at the line in front of you and you're saying, I'm on the ball, and the official would not have thrown that flag. Now, he might have said move up a little bit, but he wouldn't have thrown the flag. Buffalo fans have heard that conversation from the Kansas City game. Stick throws, Eckler catches. The gain is a couple of yards. And that old Kansas City offside, it was a different story, different play, but the conversation came with Kadarius Tony. Should he have been told? You know, you lived it. You look over, and the guy's going to tell you yay or nay. And, and, and it just takes a little communication, and it's so hard. It's a jump from college football to professional football. They'll do it in the college game as well. Right. But these guys, a lot of times, if you just look at them, mm -hmm. they'll, go, they'll wave you up or wave you back a little bit. And shame on me, guys or ladies, because we have three down judges in the NFL or line judges who are women. Catch made by Spiller on the edge of the 15-yard line is Dotson. And Bernard, the linebacking core, taking to the sideline. Here comes the third down in field goal range. Eight and a half to go. Yeah, Von Miller, we really haven't said his name much and as great a player as he's been. It's been just about a full year now that Von Miller had the ACL, and we just have not seen Mike Von Miller back to form, but he still has time. They, they sort of changed his schedule during the last couple of weeks, trying to get him back to form. 11th game, only two tackles so far this year. Third and nine, and the timeout taken here. Johnston is communicating with Guyton, and again, it's a rookie wide receiver. And Smith gives a thumbs up 
to Easton Stick before a penalty. Timeout taken here at 8.05. Yep. Yeah. Jeff's been in training all week because he knew at some point he's going to have to run a 40. Here it comes. <laughs> Look at him. He's smiling, having a good time. It's like, I'm not even going to give you the timeout. I'm going to give you the clap. I'm going to clap at you see if you hear me. You get that timeout, right? But he knew what this play means. Mm -hmm. This is a big play. And there was some trouble brewing, too. Yeah, right? and one thing you don't want to do is go back. There's four teams, any of them went out there in the playoffs. Now the Chargers wanted to repump play clock. They're not going to get it here. They look all set for this third and nine. Bills bring four. Stick steps up. Not going to get away from the sack. Puna Ford, who's only played five games, really active because of the injury to Jordan Phillips last week, comes up with a big sack, and the Chargers will try a field goal. And, Mike, that was really Ed Oliver who created that opportunity. He is right here and going to get the first pressure and throw him right back into Puna Ford. So congratulations to Puna Ford, but a little tip of the cap there to Ed Oliver. So like a hockey assist for the sack? It is, yeah. Start giving those two. Dicker from 40 to make it a one-point game. And Cameron Dicker continues to have a very good. Bills will take over the 25. Given that. So whoever you bring in as the head coach is going to want to establish something and get that going. And so I just don't think you can handicap a new coach, a new GM with the past regime. Cook with the run there. But to the point of the attractiveness of the job, you have that guy. Oh, that it, makes the job significantly more attractive than maybe some of the others that are going to come up. The stadium, the city. I mean, there's a lot of things that are attractive. But that guy right there is one of the best in the league. There's Keenan Allen there. And I, I mean, he's had a phenomenal year. We haven't really talked about him. Cook to the right. Fournette is out there with him and helping block as they have two backs in there and get it out to the 30 yard line. You mentioned what's ahead for this franchise going forward. They have a new facility being built very close by El Segundo. So and this looks spectacular. This is where the Chargers. Headquarters will be remember the move from San Diego to LA the Rams already here trying to get established and they're on their way to doing that This is drone footage of that facility this week So all part of the package that they'll be bringing to these coaching interviews For the Chargers The story of the moment here is they're in a one-point game with the Bills and it's third and three And everybody out five in the pattern Allen In the middle Dix hangs on and he's got the first down hit hard and brought down by Kenneth Murray jr. But a catch for Diggs, his second of the night. And the Bills keep the drive going. Yeah, you're, you're seeing some reaction here, too, that James Cook, when he comes out of the backfield, it's unbelievable, really, but Stephon Diggs is always such a major threat. But they've been throwing so much to the backs. That time, James Cook really was the one that drew the attention. That's where you could see Josh Allen wanted to go with the ball. He has to come back to Stephon Diggs. Probably never happened to Diggs in his life. Right here for Cook. Not much going. You talked about it, Chris, as we were preparing for the game this week. Getting five out. Getting five receivers, all eligible, all out. It's kind of changed a little bit of the way the Bills have looked the last few weeks. Well, and Joe Brady has already put them in playoff mode, which they are because of the way they are sitting here, which means you can go spread formations now and you can use Josh Allen as a runner. And so even though you see James Cook in the backfield, he's not really a blocker. He want, they want to get him out in the route and not try and pass protect with him because honestly, he's not that great at it. Cook and Fournette in the game together again. Slant inside. Diggs grabs it. Tight coverage by Michael Davis, who has been picked on a lot over the last few weeks. But a good catch in tight space sets up third and shorter. The great ones know how to make these kind of plays. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I you have no idea how hard that is. While you're getting hit, while you're getting tackled, while you're getting spun to the ground, somehow he hangs on. This is a great play. Sets up third and a long four. Latavius Murray the back into protect Allen who throws Shakir clear to the 42-yard line. 
First down to Khalil Shakir. Gain of 60. Really like the way he's developing in this offense. Second year man out of Boise State. Mike, you nailed it. It was Latavius Murray right here when he comes in the game. They're going to make sure they secure the protection first. When they have Cook in the game, they're going to get him out in the route. So they kind of alternate between those two offenses. They don't want to have to run Josh Allen in every one of these kind of key situations. So they will protect it some. Now Fournette in the game. Fake to Leonard. Up top. Game. Davis. Got it again. Late use of the hands to separate Davis the catch at the six yard line. It's a gain of 36. Well, for Michael Davis, it's been a long year this year, and Gabe Davis, right at the catch point, just before that, gave a little shrug, a little, huh? it wasn't a foul, it was just a little shrug, wasn't it, Mike? Yep. And created a little separation that allowed him to make that catch. Look at the big game for Davis, including a 57-yard touchdown. Cook back in the game. He's got it. Down to the two. Be inside the two, Kendricks, Eric Kendricks, the tackle. You're going to see right on the tail end of it down here at the bottom of the screen. And Davis just going to lean back into him here just a little bit when he tried to reach with that arm, and it just threw Michael Davis off a bit. Just enough to work that ball in there. Great job with the feet, too. That's a good play by a veteran receiver. Yeah, absolutely. Second and goal. Josh Allen giving hand signals. <laughs> Fournette running inside. Fournette trying to power in. No snowplow from the Bills there. They'll be stopped at the one. Third and goal coming up. Did you see that, Mike? Yep, I did. <laughs> Josh Allen. So you got Leonard Fournette, who's his first game coming out and being active and all that stuff. So he gets the line of scrimmage, and this is the old secret trick. You put both hands behind your back, and you're pointing one direction to tell the running back which way that you're going. And I'm sure Leonard said thank you very much. And now we're getting ready for the tush push. Buffalo style. Allen. Let's see. It digs off the goal line. So they can see he's in for the touchdown. So this is a different kind of tush push. This is more like the bobsled tush push. But Josh Allen likes to go left. He's done that a lot. Everybody crowds around the middle, around the football. Right. And he has made a good living moving to his left with a single pusher instead of a double pusher. And you can see as Allen's arm is in there, you can just you can tell a little bit too by the play sheet on his wrist. And follow that as you follow the ball in there. Lord knows <laughs> what body parts are where he's in the end zone at the back end. But it's always Murray that's doing it. Latavius Murray is like his bobsled partner. He's the one that goes and and he knows if you have two people, it's harder to go off to one side or the other. But he and Murray really have figured that thing out. Are you continuing to angle for a role on our Olympic coverage again? Well, you know, I'm Gosh. one of the great bobsled announcers of all time. <laughs> Don't you know, send me to the Winter Olympics. If, if, you can, if you can update me on that in a minute, that'd be great. Here's Bass for the extra point. Always kicks his extra points from the left hash. His ball moves left to right naturally like that. 21-13, Buffalo back 